Hello, my name is Hai from Cloud9, and this is my basic champion guide to Rengar. So, the reason why Rengar in solo queue is good is because he is a very strong champion at getting picks. And in solo queue, people are very unorganized, so they will be split more often. And he really shines when he gets to be able to jump on a single person by themselves. In team fights, he's more lackluster since they kind of just focus and kill him. But in solo queue, you have more ability to get picks. And that's the reason why he's really strong for solo queue. And you don't get punished hard for building full damage on Rengar. The jungle clear on Rengar is interesting in the fact that it's very bad. So sometimes you'll be able to do it and other times you won't. So you want to start Krugs followed by blue. Generally speaking, because you want to give your bottom lane the double golems so that they can get advantage bot lane and you get to smite red this way. So you'll do a Krugs with a leash from your top laner. And it's been a new thing in solo queue, but you should try and convince them to do a double jungle here. What that means is basically you share experience on your first camp and your second camp. So on Gromp and Blue, you will share experience on both that. So you guys both hit level 2 and you use 0 health bots for it. However, if you only get a leash on Gromp or you don't get a leash, then your jungle clear is going to be very hard. So do your Gromp, then do your Blue. And following how much HP and health bots you have after that will determine what you want to do from then. If you got W at level 2, you can go to the Scuttle Crab in the river and heal off of that. And then make your way over to Red. But as far as efficient clear times, you'll want to go from... 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and then 5 if you can and look for a gank after. You'll be at a very low HP with no health pots at 5. You'll be like a little bit over half. So if the gank isn't safe, don't do it, but you'll still be able to. However, it's very hard to just consistently farm on Rengar. So do your best to look for cheesy plays or to do the scuttle crab more often. So for purple side on Rengar, you'll want to start double golems just because your bottom lane you want to give them gromp. Starting double golem is good because you have a lot of auto attacks on Rengar, especially with your Q and your empowered Q, so you can get more stuns off and save damage that way. Ideally speaking, once again, try and have your jung or top laner double jungle with you. If he won't do that, at least ask for a leash. And if he still won't do that, it's going to be a very rough jungle for you. However, do your double golems followed by red, and then you can either look for a cheese to gank top or mid, or do the scuttle crab. Vice versa, you can go over to blue, then gromp, or not blue, uh, wolves, gromp, then blue followed by Scuttle Crab over there. Once again, I like doing cheesy plays with Rengar in the sense that look for ganks and get in E early, or try not to just farm your jungle lot since he's a very bad farmer. So for ganking on Rengar, I really like to do a level 2 gank in the sense that I like to start red buff and then get Ebola at level 2, which is your E, and look for a gank either mid or a side lane. And a lot of times it's unexpected and it works really well if your laner has CC. So for example, if you're ganking for a Maokai top, just let him know you're going to go for that gank and tell him to get W at level 2. And if he roots the person, then it's very hard for you to miss your E after that. So look for ganks on lanes that have CC and enemy laners that either A, don't have flash, or B, don't have escape. So when Rengar hits level 6, you should look for the person that doesn't have flash. Get your ferocity to 5 stacks and find that person. Press ulti and just jump on him. It should almost be a free kill as long as they don't have flash. If everyone does have flash, look for the person on your team that has CC. If you don't have CC on your team, look for the person on the enemy team that doesn't have an escape. If everyone has an escape, then do your best to force a play to work. Maybe on the jungler, maybe wait for them at their buff or something, but once you hit 6, you should look for an ult right away. And there are a lot of targets that it should work on. So, team fighting in Rengar is very simple in the fact that you have one goal in life as Rengar, and that one goal is to kill the priority target, and also the easiest target. Generally speaking, you don't want to team fight on Rengar, but in the case you do, look for the strongest person on their team that is the squishiest. So generally speaking, that will be the AD carry. Look to kill that guy, and if you kill that guy, your goal is done as the team fight. If you still lose the team fight, then whatever. But your only goal is to basically kill the highest priority target, even if that means dying for it. And generally speaking, that is the AD carry. So for a general playstyle on Rengar would be looking for plays in the sense that you don't really want to spend the majority of your time farming. Sure, you might want to farm to get to level 6, but your farming is very bad. You don't have sustain for that. So if you're going to farm the entire time as Rengar, your team's going to be mad at you. So look for plays that you can do that are smart. So he's not the strongest ganker, but he's actually very like pretty good as long as like this uh, enemy isn't prepared for it. Or if your laner has CC. So look to make plays um, early game and then follow up that pressure by just consistently looking for plays and like trying to snowball the game. As he has a lot of power. Uh, that people don't expect. And people always expect Rengar not to do ganks early just because his clear time is really weak and he'll be like low HP. 
So as Rengar, you can cast your E ability while you're jumping at the enemy champion. So if you're jumping at them from the bush, you can jump at them and cast E mid-air. And that's a very good trait that Rengars need to be able to master. So runes on Rengar, I run armor penetration reds, flat armor yellows, 5% CDR flat blues, 4 magic resist blues, and then full attack speed points. For masters on Rengar, I go 21, 9, 0. So on Rengar, at level 1 you will get Q, at level 2 you will either get W or E depending on what you want to do. If you're looking for a level 2 cheese, or if you're looking to invade their jungle, get E. However, if you're looking to just farm, get W. And at level 3, you get the skill that you didn't get at level 2. And at level 4, you max Q, followed by E, followed by W. Obviously with your ulti first, but... So on Rengar, I personally like to build Rengar as damage Rengar. Meaning, I like to build the uh, warrior jungle item. Followed by that, I like to build Hydra or Tiamat, depending on how the game is going. If I'm super fed, I'll turn my Tiamat into a Hydra. However, if I'm not super fed, I'll just keep it to a Tiamat. The reason for that is because Rengar works really well with Hydra, and the fact that it helps us clear a lot. It gives him sustained power and makes him a lot stronger. And I feel like damage Rengar is the way to play him, as tank Rengar doesn't really do much. You kind of just jump and die and kill over, and that's not very fun and your CC is kind of lackluster anyway. So for Rengar, I recommend building damage. So you'll go your warrior enchantment, followed by Hydra, followed by either tank or more damage depending on how the game goes. Generally speaking, your first tank item will be Randon's Omen, followed by MR. However, if you're building more damage, look to get a Last Whisper or a Yomu's Ghost Blade. And then obviously, uh, let's finish there. Thank you for watching. Make sure to watch the rest of the guides at lawclass.com. Take care, guys.